Treaty with the Kylan Comanche, October 21, 1867, ratified July 25, 1868. A note by the Department of State, the words of this treaty, which are put in brackets with an asterisk, are written in the original with black pencil, the rest of the original treaty being written with black ink. Articles of a treaty and agreement made and entered into at the Council Camp on Medicine Lodge Creek, 70 miles south of Fort Larned, in the state of Kansas, on the 21st day of October, 1867, by and between the United States of America, represented by its commissioners, duly appointed thereto, to wit, Nathaniel G. Taylor, William S. Harney, C. C. Auger, Alfred S. H. Terry, John B. Sanborn, Samuel F. Tappan, and J. B. Henderson of the one part, and the Confederated Tribes of Kaiwan Comanche Indians, represented by their chiefs and headmen, duly authorized and empowered to act for the body of the people of said tribes, the names of said chiefs and headmen being hereto subscribed of the other part witness. Article 1. From this day forward, all war between the parties to this agreement shall forever cease. The government of the U.S. desires peace, and its honor is here pledged to keep it. Indians desire peace, and they now pledge their honor to maintain it. If bad men among the whites, or among other people subject to the authority of the U.S., shall commit any wrong upon the person or property of Indians, the U.S. will, upon proof, made to the agent forwarded to the commissioner of indian affairs at washington city proceed at once to cause the offender to be arrested and punished according to the laws of the u s and also reimburse the injured person for the loss sustained if bad men among the indians shall commit a wrong or depredation upon the person or property of any one white black or indian subject to the authority of the u s and in peace therewith the tribes here named solemnly agree that they will own Proof made to their agent and noticed by him deliver up the wrongdoer to the u s to be tried and punished according to its laws and in case they willfully refuse so to do, the person injured shall be reimbursed for his loss from the annuities or other monies due or to become due to them under this or other treaties made with the U.S. And the President, on advising with the Commissioner of Indian Affairs, shall prescribe such rules and regulations for ascertaining damages under the provisions of this article as in his judgment may be proper. But no such damages shall be adjusted and paid until thoroughly examined and passed upon by the Commissioner of Indian Affairs and the Secretary of Interior, and no one sustaining loss while violating or because of its violating the provisions of this treaty or the laws of the U.S. shall be re reimbursed, therefore. Article 2. The U.S. agree that the following district of country to wit, commencing at a point where the Washita River crosses the 98th meridian west from Greenwich, thence up the Washita River in the middle of the main channel thereof to a point 30 miles by river west of Fort Cobb, as now established, thence due west to the north fork of Red River, provided said line strikes said river east of the 100th meridian of west longitude if not then only to said meridian line and thence south on said meridian line to the said north fork of red river thence down said north fork in the middle of the main channel thereof from the point where it may be first intersected by the lines above described to the main red river thence down said river in the middle of the main channel thereof to its intersection with the 98th meridian of longitude west from greenwich thence north on said meridian line to the place of beginning shall be and the same is hereby set apart for the absolute and undisturbed use and occupation of the tribes here named and for such other friendly tribes or individual indians as from time to time they may be willing with the consent of the u s to admit among them and the united states now solemnly agrees that no persons except those herein authorized so to do and accept such offers agents and employees of the government as may be authorized to enter upon and no reservation in discharge of duties enjoined by law shall ever be permitted to pass over settle upon or reside in the territory described in this article or in such territories may be added to this reservation for the use of said indians article three if it should appear from the actual survey or other satisfactory examination of such tract of land that it contains less than one hundred and sixty acres of tillable land for each person who at the time may be authorized to reside on it under the provisions of this treaty and a very considerable number of such persons shall be disposed to commence cultivating the soil as farmers the u s agreed to set apart for the use of said indians as herein provided such additional quantity of arable land adjoining to said reservation or as near the same as it can be obtained as may be required to provide the necessary amount Article 4. The U.S. agree at its own proper expense to construct at some place near the center of said reservation where timber and water may be convenient the following buildings to wit. A warehouse or storeroom for the use of the agent storing goods belonging to Indians to cost not exceeding $1,500. An agency building for the residence of the agent to cost not exceeding $3,000. A residence for the physician to cost not more than $3,000. And five other buildings for a carpenter, farmer, blacksmith, miller, an engineer each to cost not exceeding two thousand dollars and also a schoolhouse or mission building so soon as a sufficient number of children can be induced by the agent to attend school which shall not cost exceeding five thousand dollars 
He was agreed further to cause to be erected on said reservation near the other buildings here and authorized a good steam circular sawmill with a grist mill and shingle machine attached the same to cost not exceeding eight thousand dollars article five the u.s agree that the agent for the said indians in the future shall make his home at the agency building that he shall reside among them and keep an office open at all times for the purpose of prompt and diligent inquiry into such matters of complaint by and against indians as may be presented for investigation under the provisions of their treaty stipulations as also for the faithful discharge of other duties enjoined on him by law in all cases of depredation on person or property he shall cause the evidence to be taken in writing and forwarded together with his findings to the commissioner of indian affairs whose decision subject to the revision of the secretary of interior shall be binding on the parties to this treaty article six if any individual belonging to said tribe of indians or legally incorporated with them being the head of a family shall desire to commence farming he shall have the privilege to select in the presence and with the assistance of the agent then in charge a tract of land within said reservation not exceeding three hundred and twenty acres in extent which tract when so selected certified and recorded in the land book as here and directed shall cease to be held in common but the same may be occupied and held in the exclusive possession of the person selecting it and of his family so long as he or they may continue to cultivate it any person over eighteen years of age not being the head of a family may in like manner select and cause to be certified to him or her for purposes of cultivation a quantity of land not exceeding eighty acres in extent and thereupon be entitled to the exclusive possession of the same as above directed for each tract of land so selected a certificate containing a description thereof and the name of the person selecting it with a certificate endorsed thereon that the same has been recorded shall be delivered to the party entitled to it by the agent after the same shall have been recorded by him in a book to be kept in his office subject to inspection which said book shall be known as a kiowan comanche land book the president may at any time order a survey of the reservation and when so survey congress shall provide for protecting the rights of settlers and their improvements and may fix the character of the title held by each the u s may pass laws on the subject of alienation and descent of property and on all subjects connected with the government of said indians on said reservations on the internal police thereof as may be thought proper article seven in order to ensure the civilization of the tribes entering into this treaty the necessity of education is admitted especially by such of them as are or may be settled upon said agricultural reservations and they therefore pledge themselves to compel their children male and female between the ages of six and sixteen years to attend school and it is hereby made the duty of the agent for said indians to see what the stipulation is strictly complied with and the u s agree that for every thirty children between said ages who can be induced or compelled to attend school a house shall be provided and a teacher competent to teach the elementary branches of an english education shall be furnished who will reside among said indians and faithfully discharge his or her duties as a teacher the provisions of this article to continue for not less than twenty years article eight when the head of a family or large shall have selected land and received his certificate as above directed and the agent shall be satisfied that he intends in good faith to commence cultivating the soil for a living he shall be entitled to receive seeds and agricultural implements for the first year not exceeding in value one hundred dollars and for each succeeding year he shall continue to farm for a period of three years more he shall be entitled to receive seeds and implements as aforesaid not exceeding in value twenty five dollars and it is further stipulated that such persons as commence farming shall receive instruction from the farmer here and provided for and whenever more than one hundred persons shall enter upon the cultivation of the soil a second blacksmith shall be provided together with such iron steel and other material as may be needed article nine at any time after ten years from the making of this treaty the u s shall have the privilege of withdrawing the physician farmer blacksmith carpenter engineer and miller here and provided for but in case of such withdrawal an additional sum thereafter of ten thousand dollars per annum shall be devoted to the education of said indians and the commissioner of indian affairs shall upon careful inquiry into the condition of said indians make such rules and regulations for the expenditure of such sum as will best promote the educational and moral improvement in such tribes article ten in lieu of all sums of money or other annuities provided to be paid to indians here named under the treaty of october eighteenth eighteen sixty five made at the mouth of the little arkansas and under all treaties made previous thereto the u s agreed to deliver at the agency house on the reservation here named on the fifteenth day of october each year for thirty years the following articles to wit for each male person over fifteen years of age a suit of good substantial well and clothing consisting of coat pantaloons flannel shirt hat and a pair of homemade socks for each female over twelve years of age a flannel skirt or the goods necessary to make it a pair of woolen hose and twelve yards of calico and twelve yards of domestic 
For the boys and girls under the age of same, such flannel and cotton goods as may be needed to make each suit as aforesaid together with a pair of woolen hose for each and in order that the commissioner of Indian affairs may be able to estimate properly for the articles here named, it shall be the duty of the agent each year to forward him a full and exact census of the Indians on which the estimates from year to year can be based and in addition to the clothing here named from the sum of twenty five thousand dollars shall be annually appropriated for a, a period of thirty years to be used by the secretary of interior in the purchase of such articles upon the recommendation of the commissioner of indian affairs as from time to time the condition and necessities of the indians may indicate to the proper end if at any time within the thirty years it shall appear that the amount of money needed for clothing under this article can be appropriated to better uses for tribes here in name congress may by law change the appropriation for other purposes but in no event shall amount the amount of this appropriation be withdrawn or discontinued for the period named and the president shall annually detail an officer of the army to be present and attest the delivery of all the goods herein named to indians and shall be inspect and report on the quantity and quality of the goods and manner of their delivery Article 11. In consideration of the advantages and benefits conferred by this treaty and the many pledges of friendship by the U.S., the tribes who are parties to this agreement hereby stipulate that they will relinquish all right to occupy permanently the territory outside of their reservation as here and defined, but they yet reserve the right to hunt on any land south of the Arkansas River so long as the buffalo may range thereon in such numbers as to justify the chase, and no white settlement shall be permitted on any part of the land contained in the old reservation as defined by the treaty made between the U.S. and the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and Apache tribes of Indians at the mouth of the Little Arkansas under the date of October 14, 1865, within three years from this date, and they, this, the tribes, further expressly agree. First, that they will withdraw all opposition to the construction of the railroad now being built on the Smoky Hill River, whether it be built to Colorado or New Mexico. Second, that they will permit the peaceable construction of any railroad not passing over the reservation as here and defined. Third, that they will not attack any person at home nor traveling, nor molest or disturb any wagon trains, coaches, mules, or cattle belonging to the people of the U.S. or to persons friendly therewith. Fourth, they will never capture or carry off from the settlements white women or children. Fifth, they will never kill nor scout white men or attempt to do them harm. Sixth, they will withdraw all pretense of opposition to the construction of the railroad now being built along the Platte River and westward to the Pacific Ocean, and they will not in the future object to the come construction of railroads wagon roads mail stations or other works of utility or necessity which may be ordered or permitted by the laws of the u s but should such roads or other works be constructed on the lands of their reservation the government will pay the tribes whatever amount of damage may be assessed by three disinterested commissioners to be appointed by the president for that purpose one of said commissioners to be a chief or headman of the tribes seventh they agree to withdraw all opposition to the military posts now established in the western territories Article 12. No treaty for the cession of any portion or part of the reservation herein described, which may be held in common, shall be of any validity or force as against the said Indians, unless executed and signed by at least three-fourths of all the adult male Indians occupying the same, and no cession by the tribe shall be understood or construed in such manner as to deprive without his consent any individual member of the tribe of his rights to any tract of land selected to him as provided in Article 3 or 4 of this treaty. Article 13. The Indian agent in employing a farmer, blacksmith, miller, and other employees here and provided for qualifications being equal shall give the preference to Indians. Article 14. The U.S. hereby agrees to furnish annually to Indians a physician, teachers, carpenter, miller, engineer, farmer, and blacksmith as here and contemplated, and that such appropriation shall be made from time to time on the estimates of the Secretary of Interior as will be sufficient to employ such persons. Article 15. It is agreed that the sum of $750 be appropriated for the purpose of building a dwelling house on the reservation for Toshawa or the Silver Birch, the Comanche chief who has already commenced farming on the said reservation, and the sum of $500 annually for three years from date shall be expended in presents to ten persons of said tribes who, in the judgment of the agent, may grow the most valuable crops for the period named. Article 16. The tribes here named agree when the agency house and other buildings shall be constructed on the reservation named. They will make said reservation their permanent home, and they will make no permanent settlement elsewhere, but they shall have the right to hunt on the lands south of the Arkansas River, formerly called theirs in the same manner, subject to the modifications named in this treaty, as agreed on by the Treaty of the Little Arkansas, concluded the 18th day of October, 1865. In testimony, of which we have here unto us at our hands and seals on the day in year aforesaid. N. G. Taylor, President of Indian Commission, William S. Harney, Brevet Major General, C. C. Auger, Brevet Major General, Alfred H. Terry, Brigadier and Brevet Major General, 
John B. Sanborn, Simon F. Tappan, J.B. Henderson, Atess Ashton, Ace H. White, Secretary. Kiowa, Satonk, or Sitting Bear, has X mark. Satanta, or White Bear, has X mark. Watak, Conk, or Black Eagle, has X mark. Tana and Co, or Kicking Eagle, has X mark. Fishamore, or Stinking Saddle, has X mark. Mayatin, or Woman's Heart, has X mark. Satem Gear, or Stumbling Bear, has X mark. Sitparka, or One Bear, has X mark. Carbo, or The Crow, has X mark. Satamore, or Bear Lying Down. Comanches, Peri, Periwa Salmon, or Tim Bears, has X mark. Tipet Navan, or Painted Lips, has X mark. Tosatin, or Silver Brooch, has X mark. Cherchit Neka, or Standing Feather, has X mark. Howit Air, or Gap in the Woods, has X mark. Terhayat Wap, or Horse's Back, has X mark. Ia Nanaka, or Wolf's Name, has X mark. Atias Ta, or Little Horn, has X mark. Puya Toyabi, or Iron Mountain, has X mark. A Sadioyo, or Dog Fat, has X mark. A Test, J. C. Hardy, Inspector General, U.S. Army. Samuel S. Smoot, U.S. Surveyor, Philip McCusker, Interpreter, J.H. Leavenworth, U.S. Indian Agent, Thomas Murphy, Superintendent, Indian Affairs, Henry Stanley, Correspondent, A.A. Taylor, Assistant Secretary, William Fayel, Correspondent, James O. Taylor, Artist, George B. Willis, Phonographer, C.W. Whitaker, Trader.